If you ask ChatGPT to estimate the cost of road construction tender that you're working on without any further information or context, it'll do a terrible job. If you tell it where the road is, the length, the design makeup, give it some key quantities, it'll do a much better job. If you give it your full bill of quantities, your tender documents, five previous estimates you've done on similar projects, your resource rates, your productivity rates, if you give it all the information and context it needs to do its task, it'll probably do an outstanding job. While you wouldn't blindly sign a contract agreeing to this price, after some reviewing and some checks, you might actually feel confident submitting. I don't know whether I should say this proudly or not, but I have in fact paired estimates for major projects in AI. Everybody seems to be focused on this race towards artificial general intelligence, but if you look at the current AI models and what they're capable of, interpreting large documents, having huge context windows, and complex reasoning, they're more than capable, given the right context of information, of preparing high quality construction estimates, interpreting scopes of works, breaking down tasks into subtasks, applying resource rates and productivity rates are all well within their current capabilities. The one qualification I want to make to this is they are absolutely terrible at reading drawings. I've experienced a fair bit with this. I'm not sure if other people have, but I've found they're absolutely shocking at interpreting even basic drawings. And to me, this is the obvious big limitation in their application to construction estimating. But given this qualification, I'm gonna show you how you can build your own estimating agent to help you prepare complex construction estimates. This isn't some complex coding project. It's a very simple, very straightforward setup where it's going to help you produce a simple AI tool where you can upload your tender documents, your bill of quantities, and using a series of prompts and system prompts, we're going to output that into a structured Excel estimate. So there are going to be three key components to this AI tool. There's going to be the context, the information it needs to do the task. There's going to be a system prompt, which is some repeatable instructions that our AI agent is going to follow. And there's also going to be a task prompt, the specific instructions we give it on how to prepare the estimate. Now, if you want some instructions on how to build this and to copy the prompts I'm using, then I'll put a set of instructions in the video description that you can download. So the first step in this process is to choose the large language model that you plan on using. So you can use ChatGBT, you can use Google Gemini, you can use Claude. I find Claude the most effective and I believe Claude is the most effective at complex reasoning and mathematical tasks, particularly the new model, which came out just recently, which is Claude Sonnet 4.5. Claude's also the most reliable at structured output, which is critical when we want to take our prompts and turn them into a structured estimate output. Because something I find is when you're doing things in AI, estimating will always give you different formats. So if you restrict the output format to matching an estimate template that you're familiar with, a structure that you can follow, it's gonna be much easier for you to review and process. But really you can use any large language model. They're all pretty effective at these sorts of tasks. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new project. So Google has, the Google Gemini refers to them as gems, Claude refers to them as projects, but basically it's a structure that allows you to have a set of system prompts, some set documentation that all the new chats you create within it will reference. So I'm gonna call this construction estimator. And the goal of this to, to help me prepare accurate construction estimates for my construction contracting business. And I'm gonna create the project. So when you set up a project, what you can see is that you'll have an option to have instructions, to reference files, and also to have a chat. Now, the instructions is where we're going to put our system prompt in. Any new create, any new chat we create within this construction estimator is going to reference these instructions with all the tasks. Then we can also start new chats, which will be out where we put our 10 documents and our individual task prompts. And then we can also upload files. Now, the one problem with uploading files is that if you're uploading large files, it's always better to put them in the chat window rather than upload them as files because Claude processes them differently. Claude will search files for relevant information, but if you upload the files directly in the chat, it will use them as context within the task, which is what we want to do. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to set my system instructions. These are the instructions that Claude's going to follow for every single task it does. So I've told it, you are a construction estimator working for a construction contractor. Your task is to help the company win more profitable work. You're both terrified of underquoting jobs but also understand that pricing too high will result in us never winning work. So your goal is accuracy. I like to include terrified section because 
To me, it's always worse to underquote a job than to price too high and not to win it. So we want it to bias it towards pricing too high. Your task is to prepare detailed construction estimates given the tender document. So bill of quantities, contracts, scope of works, technical specifications, and defining then how it's going to do this. It has to analyze the tender documents, ask any clarify questions, clarify questions, and never make assumptions unless explicitly instructed to. Prepare a pricing schedule, perform detailed calculations and estimate based on resource rates, productivity rates, and other supporting information provided. Note down any assumptions. Now, these are simple system instructions. Depending on your specific circumstances and requirements, you can add more detail. You can explicitly reference every sort of document you're providing, any specific format types that you want. The idea here is this is the set of instructions that Claude's going to use in every single chat it does. The one other important thing I should note is always write down that you want to be able to export the, the estimate to Excel because that's going to make it much easier to process and review. Now, the other thing that I would include in my system instructions are my standard resource rates. So the cost of any standard resources like materials, labor, whatever, depends on the business and standard productivity rates and any standard activity task breakdowns you have. For example, for your concrete work, maybe you always break down the task based on site preparation, survey, form work, reinforcement. If you have any standard activity breakdowns or tasks like that, include them in the system instructions as files. What I mean by this is, for example, Earthworks, this is an activity template that I'm gonna upload as a system instruction. We've got Earthworks is broken down to set up and survey, survey, excavate material, load and cart away, trim to levels, spread to fill, compact to layers, blah, blah, blah. Concrete is broken down into setting out the footings, excavating the footings, blinding the concrete, fixing the reinforcement, and there's different set resource types it's gonna use. So this is gonna be the activity templates for each of our tasks. We've also got a set production rate for each of these activities. So for example, excavating material, the production rate we've got is 400 meters cubed per day. Second thing you should upload into your system instructions are your standard resource rates. So the hourly rate for foreman, leading hand, carpenter, again, whatever your project is, you'll have to upload your specific resources. These will be the rates per hour. These are the rates that Claude's gonna to use to prepare the estimate. So now I've set up my construction estimator, I've got my instructions, and I've got my standard resources and activity templates that it can follow. Now, if you've got previous estimates or historic estimates that you've prepared in Excel, they're definitely useful, but don't upload them directly as system instructions because it's gonna confuse the AI agent that's doing it. You're much better off in a separate chat or to do it manually, to go through your estimates and extract things into these two sets of categories, either activity templates, so breakdowns of different tasks, or set resource rates. Because at the end of the day, the estimate is only useful if it helps you if it helps the AI agent get the correct rates for different resources, the correct productivity rates, or the correct breakdowns of tasks and activities. Now that our system instructions are all ready to go, the second part of this is context. Context is the information for the specific project that the AI tool needs to complete it successfully. It's a really easy question to ask it, answer what context you need to provide, because basically it's the same context in a brand new construction estimator working at your company would need to know to do it correctly. Remember, large language models are simply trained on all the available information on the internet. They don't have specific special information about where you are, where your company is based. They just have broad general information from the internet. So you need to give them all the specific project information, all the specific details about your business and company for them to be able to perform the calculations correctly. Now, the incredibly important caveat to what I've just said, both in terms of system instructions and when you're preparing the context is you can't just dump everything into a chat. All of the different large language models have limited context windows. Some of them let you have a million tokens, some of them let you have 200,000 tokens, but regardless of what the limits of the model is, you need to be aware that as you give them more and more context, the performance of the model degrades. So been something that's studied, something I've proven. If you can give it very specific information about a task, limited amount of context, the model will perform much better. If you give it a huge amount of context, like yes, theoretically, you could put it all into the context window, but the accuracy of the model will decline. So it's always better not to overwhelm with information, 
to give it the most accurate, specific, best information. If you give it conflicting information, give it too much irrelevant information, you'll confuse it and it won't perform as well. So really it's a balancing act and the estimates will always be more accurate if you pre-process the information and give it a smaller amount of high quality information than simply all the information in the world. Okay, so here's what you should include within your project specific context. You should include the project scope and background, the contract and technical specifications, the scope of works, the quantities, that's critical because as I said before, large language models, AI tools like ChatGPT and Claude are absolutely terrible at reading drawings. You should include your, all your resource rates if they're not already in the system instructions. Again, if you're including resource rates in project specific information and the system instructions, you're gonna confuse the model. So either include them in the system instructions or the project specific task. You should include a template of how you want the output structured. Again, either in the system instructions or within the task. Productivity rates, your activity templates and patterns. And also if you've got it, your program and schedule. If you're giving it a program and schedule, I would specify to use the durations of the program to estimate overhead and indirect costs. So be very explicit on how you want the model to resin as well. Okay, so what I'm gonna upload for this project, and this is just an imaginary project I've made up, I'm gonna upload the scope of works, a bill of quantities, very simple bill of quantities, contract form covering the key things like payment terms, dispute resolution, liquidated damages. Some of the information is gonna be relevant to the estimate, some of it isn't. The invitation to tender form and the tender returnable schedule. So what information we have to return. Again, some of it's useful, some of it's not. It's just a very basic, simple tender package that a client might send you. Okay, once I upload those documents, the next thing we need to do is we need to specify the instructions on what the LLM is gonna do. So this is the task prompt. Okay, so here's the first prompt I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna say, attached as a construction tender, review all the documentation and ask me a list of a list of questions. For any missing information, you need to prepare the estimate. Super simple. I'm also gonna turn on extended thinking and I'm gonna make sure the model is the correct model I wanna use. So I wanna use Sonnet 4.5, but you could also use Opus, which is more of a complex, large reasoning model. Again, Gemini has different models. ChatGPT has different models, so just pay attention to which model you're using, then click enter, and then we'll see what it gives us. Now, as you can see, it's listed out its reasoning and how it's processed, so you can actually look and see what its actual thought process for how it's dealing with the documentation, and it's given me a massive set of questions. Now, if I was treating this as a serious estimate and I cared deeply about the accuracy of the result, I would go through and I would respond to every one of these questions and investigate gaps, I'm way too lazy to do that here. So I'm simply gonna construct it to make assumptions where any information is missing. You can see the first step of this is responding to the queries and gaps. Some of them you might have to go to your client to ask for more information. Some of them you might have to do some digging and find out yourself. So again, I'm gonna be lazy and I'm simply gonna ignore all these questions that asked. It has actually asked some pretty decent questions. Who bears the design risk, latent conditions, do we have to install solar panels? Are there any acoustic performance requirements, electrical re re load requirements, and the ratings of the main switchboard? This whole information we'd need to know to do an accurate estimate. But I'm simply gonna say it, please make reasonable assumptions for all these points, and please proceed with preparing detailed construction estimate in a format I can export to Excel. Make sure you have a main pricing schedule that has detailed workings for each item. Note any assumptions. Use the productivity and activity templates I have provided and the resource rates. And that, now it's gonna start working through and preparing an estimate that I can actually export, download, analyze, and review. Depending on how big your estimate is, how many documents that you've uploaded, it'll typically take maybe a couple of minutes to run through something like this. So you have to be patient, you have to wait. It is actually going through and doing a lot of reasoning and a lot of processing. And a couple of minutes later, I'm still waiting for it to finish, but you can see how much, how comprehensively it's going through the documentation and the information and noting everything down. And after about five minutes of awkwardly sitting here waiting, it's finally prepared a full construction estimate. 
And it's done this in an Excel format that I can actually look at and analyze in detail. So it's got the summary tab where I can look at the, pack, the value of each of the packages. So preliminaries, earthworks, concrete, so on and so forth. Profit and overhead, subtotal before margin. It's broken down into a pricing schedule. Then it's prepared a tab for each of the, the amounts built up in that. So preliminaries, I can see it's made up of site establishment, mobilization, demobilization, site offices, temporary fencing, tower crane hire, safety officer, first aid and PPE. Earthworks, it's done the same thing. It's used site clearing and grubbing. It's used 3,000 meters squared at $4.50 to give us a cost. All the costs are completely broken down and it's come up with a total price of $50 million, including GST or 46 excluding. It's broken down everything. And then I can review this. I can tell it to make corrections. I can tell it it's done, th done things that are wrong and go back and forward and get it to fix items. But basically, it's prepared a full estimate that I can now download into Excel and make adjustments. Now, this is a good first cut. We can go and change it. We can go and edit it. And the other thing you can do is if you want to be super lazy, you can actually get AI to check its own work and advise if it's made any mistakes. The way I would do this is I'd start a completely new chat because remember the context the model has is what you've provided it plus the history of the chat. So if you ask it, check your own work in a chat where it produced the estimate, it's not starting from scratch. So you, the way you'd want to do this, you'd want to create another chat in your estimating agent, upload the tender documents, upload the estimate and get it to check against this. But basically that is how to produce a construction estimate using AI. And it's also given us an artifact with all the assumptions it's had to make. You could work through these assumptions, tell it what to correct. So that's how you can build your own AI estimating agent with AI interested in experimenting with other ways you can use AI in estimating, then we're building all this functionality into our software offering that's designed to help contractors to prepare more accurate estimates, to never underquote jobs, and to also manage their contracts, all enhanced and supported by AI. Currently, what we've built so far into the product is a basic estimating estimate checker. So you can upload your own construction estimates, and AI will analyze them against your tender against your tender requirements and identify gaps, errors, and emissions, incorrect rates you've used. So you can basically pick up your errors before you sign a contract based on that price. So if you're interested, I'll put a video in the description of this video where you can watch a tutorial, see a demonstration of how it works.